Hello everyone. So today's lesson is about um, the fundamental theorem of algebra. So this is a continuation from the rational roots theorem that we discussed last time. Okay, so let's review for a bit. Okay, now we already considered the degree we know that polynomials degree and then the number of solutions. Now I want you to look at the table that I'm going to present. Okay. So notice if you follow through with the arrow that I'm pointing. So if the equation has degree one, notice that the number of solutions is one. So it's a linear function. Now, if I get now a, uh, a quadratic equation that has degree two, I get two solutions plus and minus two. Okay. So, and when it's th uh, three x to the, the degree is three, the number of solutions is three as well as this one. Okay. So if you notice, notice that whatever the degree is tells you the number of solutions. Okay, so basically that's kind of like the fundamental theorem. So this one is an excerpt from the textbook. That is, if, a, uh, if f of x is a polynomial of degree n, where n is greater than 0, so when n is positive, then the equation f of x equals to 0 has at least one solution in the set of complex numbers. So a corollary of that, like a follow-up, is actually this one. Okay, so if f of x is a polynomial of degree n when n is greater than zero, then the equation uh, f of x equal to zero has exactly n solutions. Okay, provided each solution repeated twice is counted as two solution, each solution repeated three times is counted as three solutions, and so on. Okay, so basically the corollary just simply states that if there is an n degree poly polynomial, it will have n zeros or n solutions. Okay. So an example of this was the one like this one. How many solutions does the equation x cubed plus 3x squared plus 16x plus 48 equal to 0 have? Now looking at the degree, since the highest power is 3, which means there's going to be what? Three solutions. When we solve this, it's going to be negative 3, 4i, and negative 4i. So you see imaginary numbers. We're going to discuss some of those answers, okay? Letter B, say another example. How many zeros does the function f of x equals x to the fourth plus 6x to the third plus 12x squared plus 8x have? Now, notice again, the highest power of the polynomial function is four, which means that's your degree, which means there's gonna be what? Four zeros, okay? So that is when we're gonna solve it, okay? Now, let's review finding zeros the ones that we use using rational root theorem and um, uh, synthetic division, okay? So let's say, for example, find the solutions to x to the th uh, third power plus x squared minus 17x plus 15 equal to zero, okay? Now notice that the highest power is three, which means the degree is three, implying that there will be three solutions, okay? So using the rational root theorem, Possible factors of 15 divided by possible factors of 1, if you're going like the arrow, will have plus and minus 1, plus and minus 3, plus and minus 5, and plus and minus 15. These are all numbers that are divisible. Okay? So let's start with 1. Okay? So if I use 1, and I'm putting all the numbers, so the 1 right here is the 1, the x equals the 1, and the numbers right here are the, num the coefficients of the equation right there. Okay? So if I'm going to do that, I bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 gives me 2. 2 times 1 gives me 2. Negative 17 plus 2 is negative 15. Negative 15 times 1 is negative 15. Then this now becomes 0, which means x equals 1 is an answer. So we already have one solution. Okay, since there are three solutions, you can get the other two using this. Now this is x cubed, which means this has to be x squared. That this, it's going to be x squared plus 2x minus 15. Whose factors are? Give me factors of negative 15, whose sum is 2. Okay, that will be x minus 3 and x plus 5. So you got now your other two answers. So which means your answer is x equal to 1, x equal to 3, and x equal to negative 5. Okay? Let's have another example. This one, it's gonna have complex solutions, okay? So I want you to look at an example. So solve the equation, 
x to the fourth plus 3x to the third plus 6x squared minus 12x plus 8 equal to 0. Now notice that the degree is 4, which means you're going to have four answers, four solutions for x. Okay. Now look at the ends. The ends are 8 and 1. So basically we're going to be looking for factors of 8 divided by factors of 1. So you're going to have plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, plus and minus 4, and plus and minus 8. So these are your possible solutions, okay? So I'm going to start, say, with 1, okay? So if I start with 1, I'm putting the 1 in here, okay? And then these are the numerical coefficients of the equation right there. So I'm going to bring down 1. 1 times 1, that gives me the 1 right here. Negative 3 and 1 gives me negative 2. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and this is 4. And this is going to be 4 here, negative 8, and then 8 equals to 0. Remember, this is x to the fourth, which means you already have 1 and one as an answer, because it's 0 right here. So you got to find 3 more, okay? Which means this is actually x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. That's going to be like this one, okay? So I'm going to copy it on the, on, the, on the same thing. And I'm going to pick still from here. Okay? So say, for example, I want to choose 2. So I'm going to put 2. So it's going to be negative 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 8. So I'm just continuing it down. So I'm going to put that up. This is 1 times 2 is 2. This is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Add is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And this becomes 0. So which means 2 is your second answer. So you already have 1, and then you already have 2. So if this is x cubed, this is going to be x squared. So this is x squared, and then 0x, and then 4. So it's going to be x squared plus 4 equal to 0. So if I'm going to solve that, I'm going to move 4 to the other side. It becomes negative 4. And then if I get the square roots of both sides, it's x equals square root of negative 4. Now square root of negative 4 is equal to plus and minus what? 2y. So this is your third and this is your fourth, which means your answers are the 1, 2, and 2i, and negative 2i. Okay? So basically, you have complex solutions. Okay? So we're going to determine what are complex conjugates. Okay? So complex conjugates are basically pairs of complex numbers. So a plus examples of it would be a plus bi and a minus bi. So... These are A and B are any real numbers. So A is the real part. B is the imaginary part. Okay? So examples would be like 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i. Okay? Now, conjugate, conjugate, uh, complex conjugate theorem tells you that if one of them is, an, uh, is a 0, then the opposite is also a 0. So which means if A plus BI is a 0 imaginary, then the conjugate is also an imaginary okay let's have an example of, of this one okay so let's try to write a polynomial given the zeros so example write a polynomial function f of at least degree that has a rational coefficient a leading coefficient of one and the zeros of two and three plus i remember if there is an imaginary q plus i then the opposite, 3 minus i, is also a 0. So actually you have what? 3, 2, 3 plus i, and 3 minus i. That is, if you have now, if it's 2, then it becomes x minus 2. That's 1, right? And if it's 3 plus i, it's going to be x minus 3 plus i. And we all know that 3 minus i is also an answer. It's going to be x minus 3 minus i, okay? So what I'm going to do is move the parentheses, so it's still x minus 2 here. I'm moving the parentheses over here, okay? So negative 3, x minus 3, and then this becomes negative i. This says x minus 3, and then this becomes negative, negative, it becomes positive i. So notice it's x minus 3 minus i and x minus 3 plus i. So what I'm going to do now is to multiply this and this. This is difference of two squares. One is minus and one is plus. Okay? So it's going to be something like this. 
3 x minus 2 times x minus 3 quantity squared minus i squared okay so let's expand x minus 3 quantity squared is x squared minus 6 x plus 9 now i squared is squared of negative 1 so if you square a squared of negative 1 it's just going to give you negative 1 okay so negative negative it becomes positive so it becomes positive 1 adds to 9 it becomes x squared minus 6x plus 10 and then all you got to do is just simply multiply okay so x times x squared is x cubed x times negative 6x is 6x squared x times 10 that gives you 10x and then multiply it by 2 negative 2 times 2x is negative 2x squared negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12 and negative 2 times positive 10 is negative 20 and then just simply combine terms which means your function is actually x cubed. Negative 6x squared and negative 2x is negative 8x squared. 10 and 12, that gives you 22 minus 20. Okay? Let's have another one. Okay? So here, still the leading coefficient of 1. And the zeros are negative 1 and 4i. So which means, again, there are three zeros. Negative 1, 4i, and negative 4i. So if I'm going to do that, negative 1 would now mean x plus 1 because it's the opposite. And then 4i would mean x minus 4i. And since negative 4i is also a solution, it's going to be x plus 4i. So I'm going to multiply this too. Okay? So this too is difference of two squares. So it's going to be x plus 1. That's going to be x squared. And 4i times 4i is 16i squared. Remember, i squared is negative 1. And that multiplies with negative 16. That gives me what? x squared plus 16. So if I'm going to multiply that, it's going to give me x times x squared is x cubed. x times 16 is 16x. 1 times x squared is x squared. And 1 times 16 gives me 16. And just simply arrange that and get my final answer. Okay? So your online classwork now will be on... Big ideas. You have 15 problems in there, okay? This is due at the end of the week. Next meeting is your first quiz on Schoology. So we will still meet on that next meeting, which is actually on Wednesday, to review and to show you how to take the test, okay? Any questions?